Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It's Space Engineers Plus Me, episode 50. I'm an Igbeus, and today it's a weird kind of crossroads that we've arrived at with the game. We're here on the Atlas. Uh, we're kind of tilted it at an angle, which is nothing new. It's just a sort of a recurring theme. You might notice we've got a couple of new, com newly completed ion thrusters. These are the reverse thrusters, uh, but unfortunately, we had that's it. That's all we got to completed ion thrusters. See what happened is we went to the moon, we were on the moon, we had a ship, we made the Spectre Platinum, we went to the moon, we mined 500,000 kilograms worth of platinum. We had to be a little bit creative and process some of the platinum on the moon to cut down on the waste so that we could get it all back down to the surface of our Earth-like planet and continue construction of the Atlas and the whole purpose for getting the platinums was so that we could make the thruster components which are required to finish all of our ion thrusters. So it's a very simple straightforward task. Got down to the planet's surface, landed very safely with the Spectre Platinum, started making thruster components, and then we ran out of gold. Gold is another one of the components for the, the, the thruster components, so we went over that away with the Canary, and we found a gold deposit, and we drilled down to it, and we started clearing it out. We got about 110, 120,000 kilograms worth of gold, put it in the Canary, flew it back, sent it into processing the refineries. We had eight refineries processing platinum and two remaining that we set to process the gold. So they each had about 50,000 kilograms worth of gold in each one. And we went and did some things and we came back and the gold was gone. It just disappeared from the refineries. Now I read that there was a bug where it wasn't visible in the refinery. You could have things that weren't visible in the refinery, but they would still be behaving as though they were present uh, and visible, they'd still be processing, you'd still be getting the ingots out of them, it wasn't a big deal. In our case, we were getting nothing, we weren't getting anything at all, we were still out of gold, we weren't able to make any more thruster components, and I said, okay, well, I don't really feel like going and mining more gold right now, uh, at least we don't need more platinum, so what I'll do is, I've had a lot of fun with the, um, the Spectre Platinum, but it needed some work if we were going to keep it as a long-term ship for any kind of purpose, and I said, you know, let's go, let's go retrofit the Spectre Platinum, uh, and we ended up with that guy down there, which is incomplete. This is the Spectre Omni, which is, um, it's going to be designed specifically for all sorts of interstellar travel, where you don't need a ton of uh, processing capacity, you don't need a vast inventory capacity. We've got one large cargo container, which is a lot, but, uh, you know, some of our ships have had more. Basically, the whole idea is it's a nice convenient shuttle to have around, and I'm hoping that it's going to fit on the back of the Atlas so that we can take it with us wherever we go, but we'll see. You can see we've got some ion thrusters. It's four ion thrusters providing lift, uh, and four large atmospheric engines providing lift, so fewer problems with not being able to get off of surfaces uh, with the weight based on how much is in the cargo hold. I also got two large atmospheric thrusters providing forward thrust, and I think eight or ten small ion thrusters providing forward thrust so that we've got, you know, the same thing covered. We can get uh, get around on planet surfaces in atmosphere, and we can also get around in space. We've got a bunch of small ion thrusters prov providing thrust in all the other directions, so much more versatile ship in terms of being able to get where we wanted to go, but you'll notice that none of the thrusters are complete. We couldn't complete the large ion thrusters, of course. We knew that as we were placing them because we don't have the thruster components, but we also didn't have enough motors to finish the large atmospheric thrusters. So I said, okay, no problem. We'll make, we'll make a bunch of motors, and then we ran out of nickel. <laughs> nickel, if you'll recall, was the ore that we had in one of the cargo holds of the Mantis when it just spontaneously uh, combusted, I guess you could say. It, just, it was doing fine, it, would, it was doing what it had been doing for hours in the past, and then just all of a sudden it tore itself to pieces, courtesy of the, the Lord Clang himself. And we lost just over a million kilograms worth of nickel. So we had to go back to the moon to get platinum, that was understandable. We ran out of platinum, we had to go get more we needed gold to finish making the thruster component, so we went and we got more gold. That disappeared, so we tried to do something else just to give ourselves a little bit of a break. We ran out of the material that we were going to um, need for that, and we remembered that we had over a million kilograms worth that we lost in a silly bug-related accident, and I didn't really feel like going to get more of that either. So there's, there's a point in time where you realize that things are going bad on account of bug-like things. 
and, you, and you're tired of having to go and redo things that take literally hours. Like if we were to try and mine a million kilograms worth of nickel right now, we would either have to do it by hand, which would be ludicrous, or we would have to build another ship to mine it, do all the stuff and the things. It's hours. It's hours of time involved in recovering things due to bugs. Now, it's the nature of the early XS beast. These things can happen, but it doesn't mean that we have to take it lying down if we can avoid it. So we've got this over here that's under construction. It's about 90% there. I need to do the automation parts of it. I need to test it. And then the next episode, we're going to do a detailed video showing how it works, how to make it work, what it does, and all that other stuff. And we're going to release it along with the blueprint. This is the shrine to Lord Clang. Clang giveth and he taketh away. He's been doing plenty of taking away. Now it's time for him to giveth. And that's exactly what we're going to do down here. I can give you kind of an overview of what this thing is for and how it's expected to work. We're gonna come down here. It's actually very simple and straightforward. Um, don't don't let all the colors and the gaudiness <laughs> distract you. Basically, what we've got is we've got this large cargo container and it's suspended by merge blocks using a lot of the concepts that we have for the gantry over here. The gantry is much more detailed and much more intricate. This is much more simple in comparison, but basically we're holding this large cargo container in place attached to the grid overall by merge blocks, and then we've got drills and and, uh, and welders, or sorry, grinders and welders in place. See, we've got a welder over here, and we've got some welders here and grinder there and all that other stuff. So the whole idea is you release this merge block and it drops this container into the area beneath which is surrounded by grinders. So it grinds up the container and anything else that comes like the merge block and that will fall down and get ground down as well. And everything that's in the container will get dumped into that collector down at the bottom which feeds via conveyors to this large cargo container down here. Then because we've got a blueprint attached to it all we weld the whole thing back up and we do it again you say what's what's the benefit to that well according to the last time i did anything like this with welding large cargo containers and blueprints whatever whatever is in the container when you make the blueprint will be in the container when you recreate the container from the blueprint so let's say we had a hundred thousand kilograms of nickel in this container when we grind it down. Well, that 100,000 kilograms worth of nickel is going to fall into the collector. It's going to go into there, and then we're going to weld a new container from the blueprint that's also going to have 100,000 kilograms of nickel, and we're going to grind it down, and it's going to fall into there. And we just keep doing that over and over and over again, and we're basically able to harvest blueprint containers for their contents to recover what Clang takes from us elsewhere in the world. Now, the reason why I felt a little bit more comfortable about releasing a video to discuss this and, and talk about what was going on and why we made it is because we can actually discuss some of the concerns that we have about what is essentially exploiting game mechanics in order to uh, get these materials. And in my case, first of all, I need to stress this is a single player world. Uh, it's not intended to be uh, turned into a server at any point in the future. So for me, I have to be aware that having this kind of accessibility with regards to materials and components that I can duplicate at will, something that I have to be very, very careful about. You don't want to take this kind of thing for granted because all of a sudden you have this survival game that's all about the cycle of gathering materials, processing materials, making components, building cool things with them, using those cool things to gather more materials, etc., etc. If you start removing big chunks out of that process, it can ruin the game for a person. They find themselves bored and uninterested in continuing. So there's that thing that we have to worry about. It becomes even more of a concern when we start transferring something like this into a server scenario with multiple players. Let's assume that it's all cooperative. There's no PvP. Nobody's fighting anybody. It, it's, it's a little bit douchey to kind of be taking that sort of shortcut, giving yourself a competitive advantage. Some people get really upset when you build a big house and then they build a bigger house and they're like, ah, I built a bigger house. And you're like, ha ha ha, and you duplicate a bunch of mats to make a bigger house that's bigger than theirs now. It's, it's a little bit of drama that doesn't need to happen. Uh, a, a person needs to be aware that duplicating stuff in a multiplayer environment is, is an exploit. It's not even a technicality, it's just a straight up freaking exploit. We don't need to get into uh, a long, drawn out discussion on whether it is or it isn't. When we're on servers, we want to respect the people that we're playing with and not do things that upset them because we're technically cheating. 
when it comes to competitive servers using something like this to duplicate materials is just being an asshole it's there's i mean you're competing with people in the sense that there's if they're doing things by the rules the way the game is meant to be played they're gathering their stuff they're doing the processing they're building the components they're building the ships and you can skip giant chunks of that process and gain a tremendous competitive advantage over them in a setup that's supposed to be pvp from the beginning it's just I mean, do we, again, it's another, another one of those things. Some people try to turn it into a debate or a conversation and it's not, it's just an asshole thing to do. So I don't want to present this like, this is what everyone should be doing. It's not a big deal. At the same time, I don't want to be spending a ton of time pretending like I feel the need to justify what I'm doing. I am using an exploit to give myself materials that I haven't earned through gameplay in order to make up for the crap that I've lost from bugs. And I'm not going to be sitting down and keeping track of everything that I get from this system relative to the stuff that I've lost to make sure that I'm not taking more than I was, you know, uh, penalized in the past. It's something that I'm going to be using judiciously to make sure that I don't have to spend six hours gathering materials to recover stuff that I already should have had access to based on the things I'd already gathered. So, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, the reasoning behind it. We want to be careful. We want to recognize that it's a double-edged sword. Clang giveth, Clang taketh away. If he wasn't taking away, we wouldn't be justified in forcing him to give. But he is taking away, and he takes away a lot. So it's nice to have something that will allow us to take it back. So that's what we're what we're doing. The Shrine of Clang will be revealed in its completed form the next episode with the blueprint and a detailed description on how it works and how to make it work and all that other stuff. The Spectre Omni will be pretty close to finished by then as well. We're not going to spend a ton of time looking at it because this really needs to be the focus right now. You can see we've got a bunch of hydrogen thrusters placed. Uh, basically, their, their locations are, are um, set with the, the skeletons of the thrusters themselves, even though they're not welded up yet. We've got some ion thrusters underneath. Uh, those will be um, related to giving us a bit of a boost in space, being able to move around. It's not necessarily to get us out of gravity wells, it's to allow us to move in that specific direction while we're in space. Uh, and we still have to get all the tuning and the automation done for this system. We need to get the track ships uh, updated, revised, tested, and the drill ships as well. So th there's lots of stuff that we need to be doing. And once we get everything else sort of out of the way so that we can continue doing the things we need to be doing, then that's exactly what we'll be doing. So if you want to be notified when we add future videos in this series and other series for other games, whenever they come, you can subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on social media. Links for social media are always in the information box below the video. Feel free to leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.